Hello everyone, and this is Vajranti Pugalia, and I'm the founder of Sonali's Kubo, and I'm welcoming you to another awesome session today, which is dealing with startups and my very favorite female entrepreneurs on the series, Women in Stability in Times of Instability. And before I introduce my phenomenal, beautiful guests who are in with me today, I would want to say that it's all about female startup entrepreneurship that we'll be talking about today. And uh, you will be amazed to know that according to a, a research by the Reserve Bank of India, only 5.9% of the startups led by women founders are what is existent in our country. And India ranks about 52nd in position to about 57 countries in line in terms of the women index entrepreneurship uh, sector of in, in the year 2019 which is pretty pretty ironical the question here is though we know that the the market and the research says that the women entrepreneurs are far far more compatible than the male counterparts they are good at risk management they they know the calculative length of the risk that they need to take they are not prone to overconfidence they are super super ambitious because the women who are in the C level job suits also, once uh, you know they have attained a lot of confidence, they want to start their own enterprises, which is totally phenomenal. But then why is it that in India, we have to still face the gender bias? How much ever we say that it does not exist, it does. And today to talk about the difficulties which is faced by women entrepreneurs, especially in startups, and what all, um, you know the issues that uh, are the targets which needs to be addressed i have two phenomenal women who started their company from the start who are the founders of chaika tea and i want to introduce to you aradhita agarwal and devanshi chitlangya welcome guys hi thanks for having us vejanti hi Thank devanshi you for having us. hello it's great to have you guys and today's session is for me to get inspired again because when I see young blood like you, uh, you know, having started your journey from the start and have attained so much, like I was amazed when that day I went FB Live and someone from Bangalore said, I have stopped having any other tea than Chaika and that was awesome to hear because that showed that in the limited time that you guys have been in business, how much of market strength you've already been able to develop that's commendable so my first question goes out to you Radhita would you like to start telling us and other viewers how did this entire journey start so maybe you can give us uh, some details and the rest can be given by Devanshi sure so basically we Devanshi and I are both from uh, tea families so we've seen uh, we've grown up seeing tea plantations and we've grown up having chai and we really really love our tea like for me my day cannot start without having my morning cup of tea and I need like subsequent uh, refuels throughout the day but uh, the sad part about this whole scenario is that I don't know how to make tea and neither does Devanshi. So when we both went to study abroad, we both realized that we were missing our masala chai and we didn't know how to make it. And we realized that a lot of other people who are in the same scenario as us, they love tea and they don't know how to make it. Or maybe they don't have the time to brew that perfect cup of masala tea because it, it does take quite a while. Yes. So we decided to think of uh, a product that could cater to other people in, the, in a similar scenario uh, to us. And that's basically how Chaika came about. Um, it, was, it, it was just meant to appeal mainly to uh, the younger generation who, have maybe, who maybe love tea but don't know how to make it. Awesome. Okay. Devanshi, what do you have to say to that about the journey, how you started it? Uh, anything else you want to add to what Aradhita just had to oh, say? I think Aradhita has given a really vivid description of how it exactly started and sometimes it did get a little embarrassing for us to tell people that we don't know how to make chai especially because now as for Indian society we are married women not knowing how to make chai right but this is the perfect solution we thought for people who are young who love tea and who don't know how to make it or they just don't have the time. 
So the main thing is, look at it, it's a huge time saver actually because it's um, you know it's like two minutes to make a cup of tea as opposed to like a 15, 15 20 minutes to brew, to brew that brew perfect it for cup a of longer tea. time. A rather time you don't have to brew it for a longer time. To make no, 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 no. So you just have to empty a sachet into a mug and add hot water and stir. That's it. So you don't really have to brew chai ka. Awesome. That's awesome. And I think Devanshi, it is very good for the people who are traveling abroad or uh, who need that Indian flavor early in the morning to have their eyes wide open, you know, to go on and get on to the day. So I think for travelers, it's very good. What do you have to say to that? So I feel not only travelers, but even in our day-to-day lives, we end up using chaika a lot. Uh, especially, I'm going to talk about the afternoon belt where post-lunch you require your tea and you are either at work and you need like a quick cup of tea so you can just put hot water and make that. Or even if, it are, if you're at home, your staff is sleeping or you're too done with lunch. So you don't want to get into the kitchen again. And that's the time where you can just brew chaika and it's made. So another thing you guys have now chaika only at home or are you like having the normal tea as well? <laughs> I would so, say a mix. A mix. Yes. Okay. A mix, yeah. All right. Same here. Yes, uh, about the topic today, which is basically the difficulties. You know, I know that you guys had a very strong intent and a purpose, which is basically the foundation how the startup starts. That is, you, again, were a problem saver and that makes you uh, an entrepreneur because you try to make modern living better. Now, when I talk about difficulties, you know, each, each entrepreneur has their own experience. So I would like you all uh, to tell the viewers and me because uh, how did the struggle was and, you know, firstly, what were the struggles and then how did you overcome it? So yes, over to you, Devanshi, if you want to start that first. So I feel that starting out in India is, wasn't really easy. And Radhita and I had both worked in Singapore. So we had both worked in a very structured, disciplined environment where women were treated at par with men. When we moved back to India and we started working on Chaika, we had to deal with a lot of vendors in industries that were male dominated, like logistics, right. manufacturing, packaging. Right. And when we did talk to them, one of the most atrocious questions we did face were like when we were trying to negotiate rates were like, oh, why don't you get your dad along or your husband along because they would be better at this. And it did take us a lot of time to actually set out that what we're doing is not just two housewives doing it to pass time as a hobby. But right. what we're doing this as more like a business and we do want to get the best rates out of that. True, true. So, so definitely when the, 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 for them to take two married women seriously, uh, cliched, maybe just a time pass is something what they had in their mind. What else, uh, Aradita, what were the other hiccups that you had to face? So yeah, like this was, this was, I think, a huge issue that we faced. Like I remember a time when we were negotiating with a supplier for our uh, packaging and we were like, oh no, the rates are too high. We can't, um, you know, our costing is going to go up and then we'll have to increase our MRP. We can't afford to increase our MRP. We had people literally, like we had the supplier literally say to us that how does it matter to you? Papa ko bol dije kharid lenge, kya farak oh, wow. So th- they, they literally would not take women seriously. Um, Can I just add to that? Is it also because if you come from a very well-to-do background, like if your father is in a business or your brothers are doing well and the family has a name, so... Do you think that also adds to the fact that maybe it's a time pass for you and it's not something that you want to do something on your own? Yeah, maybe maybe that could have also been um, a factor in that. But uh, I feel that uh, had my, for example, had my brother or my husband gone into the same meeting, they would not have had the audacity to say something like that to their face. So it was just because of the fact that they saw like, you know, two women, two, you know, young married women. Um, they thought, ha, time pass ke kar rahi hai. like, how does it matter? And that's how they probably had the audacity to even make a comment like that. Because could you, could you imagine if like, um, you know, even from a well-to-do, do family if you could imagine like the son from a well-to-do family goes into the similar meeting could you imagine the supplier saying a similar thing to that they would not dare to do something like that 
True, true, very true. Mm -hmm. And Devanshi, what were the other hiccups in terms of family? How supportive were there? Or should I say that, um, how supportive do you think uh, in terms of, you know, married women managing their, their economical journey, which is about to start and as well as their homes? How far did it uh, go down the throat of the family? And secondly, where did you manage the finance as in uh, to convince uh, your investors into your uh, diaphragm of work? How was that possible? So I'll address the first thing first. And I genuinely feel like the most supportive person who you do require to be on your side is your husband. So my husband, I think the same thing for Radha, both of them have been super, super supportive. And they keep cracking jokes on how they really want to see us to be huge. Awesome. And actually come on Forbes or like have a large household name. Awesome. And the other thing is, at least from my side and Aratha's side, both our in-laws have been super, super supportive. And my my father-in-law especially. So there were times when he would tell me, if you're not going to be at work at 9.30 a.m., I'm not going to take you seriously. So you better work 9.30 to 6. Awesome. And no random lunches, no coffee meets, nothing. So it really got into the, it really got me to be a lot more disciplined and made me realize that, okay, I could live a very professional life uh, in spite of being married. So Radhita, what else do you have to add to it? So specifically uh, dealing with the vendors or, you know, the, the merchants of different uh, areas of trade that one needs to face when that person is putting up uh, her, her label on, on the market. Uh, any other incident that you remember or what are the other pointers that you want to bring forward to the audience as female entrepreneur you guys faced? Um, definitely. I think as female entrepreneurs, uh, there are like certain things that you have to um, work a little extra hard on. Um, firstly, you have to work extra hard to establish your credentials because the first thing people tend to do when they see a female entrepreneur is to first dismiss her or think of her as maybe like a housewife, someone who's bored like we said earlier. Um, so for us, I think credentials mattered a lot. Uh, for me, um, I'm a certified tea taster, so that that helped a lot when we when we spoke to um, you know tea brokering firms to taste our product and to give us feedback. So it really helped that they knew that even I knew what I was talking about. Uh, another thing that really established our credentials for us is the fact that both of us come from uh, tea backgrounds. Right. So. A lot of vendors over there sort of knew that uh, our credentials that way were strong. So I think that's one thing as a female entrepreneur people have to keep in mind. And I would say second thing is sort of time management because um, as women, I think we have a lot of additional responsibilities of uh, the family and, um, you know, of your house and all of that, which also have to be kept in mind. So maybe time management comes into play. And here definitely, like Devanshi said, um, you know, having a supportive husband, having supportive in-laws, which both of us do, they've been super supportive to us throughout our journey. Um, even like, you know, encouraging us to go for work trips. Our husbands joke that they want to go, that they want us to go for work trips so that they can plan golf trips around it. So that's, that's really like helped us a lot. So is it um, the confidence that has been imbibed into your work because luckily yeah, you guys come definitely. From, yeah, from, from the domain where you guys actually went, uh, ventured out to make it easier for the youth, you know, but yes, your domain really helped you. But yes, you did need to struggle a lot when it comes to proving your potential and to be taken seriously. And yes, as you say that the gender biasness definitely works as a major catalyst in bringing that down because, uh, you know, you need that extra extra effort and you need to put in your extra smile on your face and not just fuse the, to the one who's sitting in front of you that you know what uh, just bloody take me seriously you know that's what I mean but um, I wanted to ask you that Chaika uh, is, is a brand where you are brewing these different flavors are you uh, like how far have you been are you able to actually cater to international market what are your plans with it 
uh, that is something because in India, I know that you are operating from Swiggy, from Zomato, uh, yeah. you know, uh, people know about it. And so I want to know, uh, firstly, Devanshi, your reach, uh, what have you been able to do in the time that you have given to Chaika till now? And then my next question would be for Aradita as to what are your future plans with Chaika? So in the last six months, we launched in November and we started our reach with a lot of wedding planners and got great traction through events and weddings. We moved on to collaborating with different clubs, hotels and offices and popular clubs like RCGC, Royal Calcutta Golf Club, Tolliganj Club, Saturday Club, Bengal Club are just some of the clubs that are taking our products. We had hotels on board as well and offices on board as well and it was in february that we decided to start our retail channel with amazon and march we started out with a few retailers in the eastern belt like krishna knickknack and so on and because of this lockdown gave us a great opportunity to actually expand our online presence so we come came on on flipkart peppy cart Zomato, LBB, Swiggy. That's awesome. That's awesome. But uh, what I want to know is that, um, you know, as you said that you catered to so many clubs, you collaborated with events. I think that was a very, very intelligent, um, you know, movement because not just hitting the retail directly, but targeting the points where the conjugation of thoughts, that is when people actually sit and brew tea is, uh, was really intelligent. So how far Devanshi that, did that time take when you had to actually close the deals with all of these clubs and event planners? How, how difficult was that? So it really varied club to club and planner to planner. So some would just take probably a day or two while the others took a week or two. I think the toughest was hitting the first club and the first event planner. Mm. It's a lot of it was the herd mentality. If you tell them, okay, this club is already on board, the next few came on board easily. So or this the USP that team. you told them about Chaika, which got you the first event planner and the first club? So for event planners, we realized that the wedding hampers itself that they would place in every room would require the masala chai. And our biggest USP was packaging when it came there. With event planners also, I think instantly our packaging appealed to them. So they were like, okay, this is a cheap alternative to give us mehendi giveaways or baby shower giveaways. And it would be within the budget, it would look unique and it would look richer than it actually was. And it was a new product, so people didn't mind. And with club, what, clubs, what we realized, like especially like RCGC, it was winter and playing golf myself, my husband plays golf, but Radha's husband plays golf. We realized they would have loved a cup of garam chai on the golf course. And we thought we could really cater to that need. Awesome. So that's a really, really strategic movement on the part of Chaika and you guys as founders to hit where, you know, the iron was hot. And, uh, you know, this is a very, very intelligent move in terms of the viewers who are planning to start their work to understand where the market lies and just not think that, okay, I need to just hit the retail market. It's perfectly fine to start in pockets and then go on to the retail. You did just the opposite of what maximum people do is to try and hit the retail market market first. So Aradita, what are your future plans with uh, Chaika and uh, yes, where do you plan to, I know you guys want to be on the magazine of Forbes, but besides <laughs> that, what is uh, the ideation to uh, Chaika? So basically, probably just before the lockdown, we were planning to go retail in, um, in West Bengal, that is like hit hit a lot of the smaller stores like the Vanchi mentioned we are already in a few of the larger stores in Calcutta like Krishna and Nicknack and the you know club convenience stores and stuff like that but we wanted to hit the smaller stores as well so we were we were in talks with uh, super stockists and distributors and things like that but then COVID hit and we had to sort of shelve our plans for the time being um, our immediate sort of points of growth right now are we're, we're going to be going retail pretty soon in West Bengal. Um, we are also looking at starting out at Spencer's 
at uh, food hall all across the country and uh, at big basket because now a lot of um, a lot of uh, people are preferring um, you know at home deliveries rather than actually going to the shop themselves with yes. with covid right. which is why we want to tie up uh, especially with big basket uh, and grofers as well we are trying to get on board with them um like um, like you know uh, during the lockdown we worked to get on to swiggy zomato lbb amazon flipkart like we try to get on as many online platforms as possible and that being said through the online platform we also want to go international which is what you were talking about uh, earlier um we want to start b2c uh, through our website we are launching our website very soon um through that we want to start delivering to customers abroad because we already have had a huge demand from the nri community which we haven't been able to cater to because we yeah. we want shipping abroad so within maybe a month or so we want to start shipping abroad to cater to those clients and we also want to start uh, doing a little bit of b2b business abroad so that we can have our product available in indian supermarkets and indian stores uh, across the world especially in places like singapore uk and other countries that have a huge uh, indian diaspora so you know they also miss their ghar ki chai and they also don't have much time to make it so it's a, it's an ideal product for people um, you know who live abroad and they miss their ghar ki chai that's awesome aradita which brings me to the next consequent and a very uh, relevant question posed that that you went through a lot of e-commerce changes during the covid and you used this time to maximize your reach the retail market reach out to those clients who can't step out of their homes uh, and this was a time where i think you maximized your returns in, in the minimalistic uh, situation that was available to you so as an entrepreneur i would not even use the word female as a very intelligent entrepreneur radhita just a second phase to the entire thing that you said how what do you want to say to the people and that uh, how can they maximize the covid times because you know mainly uh, it is a instability time that's the reason i always bring people like you to stabilize that and share your experiences because people pick up tips here are usne kya kiya tha jo main kar sakti or maybe sometimes it just don't even think that oh this is also possible but let 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 me tell you viewers that these set of entrepreneurs have been able to cater to so much during this covid times and maximize their e-commerce during this time so yes aradita what do what do you want to say to people how can they maximize this time so initially the with the outbreak of covid it was very difficult for us because two of our largest uh, streams of revenue sort of dried up because we used to rely on weddings as a huge stream of revenue and hotels and clubs as another huge stream of revenue so both of those completely dried up but uh, we realized that we had to sort of reposition the product and make it into an essential with the lockdown people were facing shortages of milk people weren't able to step out and you know order the kind of um, all the food products that they needed so we basically just had to reinvent ourselves in order to to you know work to the needs of the customer Right. in covid times so you know we advertised uh, to to sort of say that chai ka is a great substitute if you're not being able to get milk because it already has milk powder added in it right. and we saw that we got huge orders from people uh, to you know stock chai ka in their houses not only for themselves but also for their servants for their security guards because you know they, these people used to normally go down to a roadside dhaba and have their you know morning and evening cup of tea but with covid they weren't able to do that and people didn't want them to step out yeah. so people started even buying it for their security people started buying it for their offices as offices started reopening because in a lot of offices including my own we have like uh, you know a dhaba chai wala come with a kettle and he just pours out cups of tea for everyone but obviously right now our office has restarted but um, you know we can't allow the dhaba guy to come up up uh, with his kettle so we are using chai ka in our office so we had to sort of rethink on different uses of the product with covid times uh, getting on all these online platforms was a way to ensure that people could buy our product because even though our plans of going retail had to be shelved for the time being we could ensure that our product was available to almost every person who has you know a smartphone and an internet connection in fact i would i, I can even go on to say that right now zomato and swiggy probably contribute 
a lot more to our revenue than um, any of the retail stores did before covid so a lot of people are buying it a lot of people even have staff shortage right now because a lot of their staff went back to their villages before um, the lockdown so they are loving our product because it's saving them another 15 20 minutes in the kitchen yeah. so in fact like now earlier if we got like orders from a certain house for say two boxes now that same house is ordering maybe 20 boxes because they want to use it as a daily product rather than you know just like a fun product for once in a while now like you have a chaika and you get hooked on to it yeah. i hope for me so, yes <laughs> So Devanshu, actually, I want to pick up what Radhika said that you know, uh, tapping onto the e-commerce has uh, accelerated, you know, the reach uh, into the market. And as you're saying that Zomato, Swiggy have given awesome results. So how did you guys actually manage the stock? Is it something that uh, you had with you, or is is the man is you know the packaging and and the brewing that you do on your own to package the different flavors? Is it like was it like the was it from before or the work? continued in this time so all our chai ka sachets are packaged in a factory and blended in a factory that do meet international norms and the factory has its own fssci license and it is iso certified so most of the chai ka that we have currently was packaged pre covid so it was january and early february okay. so we ended up using that existing stock because we had pre planned the stock for going retail and now moving ahead i think we are waiting for production to start off again because we shouldn't say that but we have all flavors but we see them running out yes <laughs> and i'm sure i want them to run out because you guys are so strong with your intent and that brings to this another facet of chaika viewers which is how beautifully they evolved from being just entrepreneurs to just startups to social entrepreneurs and i really cannot stop today's conversation without talking about raise your tea to humanity you know what these uh, both entrepreneurs are doing out of chaika for the bengal relief so yes in minimal words uh, divanshi what do you want to say about this endeavor that you are doing for the bengal relief and then aradhita you can add to that please so chaika is an msme company that's a micro enterprise and we are completely made in bengal so we felt to some extent that it was our responsibility to contribute towards the cyclone over all these years i feel for the last 10 years i've always heard of this cyclone coming or that cyclone coming and it gets deviated and goes off to bangladesh this was the first time i actually felt what a disastrous event the cyclone could be and when i did talk to staff or i did talk to people it was atrocious to see how the houses got blown away and the difficulties they were facing that's when i rather than i thought that though we are a startup we know we can't give large sums of money but we're going to start out this initiative called raise a cup of tea for humanity and donate proceedings towards the cyclone relief fund that's awesome aradhita your words please on it Yeah definitely I think um for me um fun was something that I have never like I never thought I could have even experienced like the sort of effects and the next day seeing the trees strewn all over the city like it was scary for me living in a proper in a proper house with a proper roof over my head so I can't imagine how scary it was for those who didn't have a proper roof over their head or they were living in a pakka house sorry a kachcha house so that was that was i think the largest uh, driving force for both of us when we thought of um, starting this campaign and like the vanshi said being a startup we couldn't just exactly you know like write a check saying that okay we are going to give this much so we thought why not do a fundraiser and um, for every box uh, of chai ka sold we decided that we would donate 20 rupees uh, to the cause and i'm i'm quite happy to announce even on on this that uh, it's done pretty well so far and uh, we've managed to raise uh, around 8500 already for um, for cyclone arm fund relief and it's going to continue so we we the vanchi and i were thinking and of extending it new because i knew that this was like every package of viewers yeah. but i was uh, talking about sometime earlier two three days back that every package of chai ka tea that you buy on the 27th and 28th of may 20 rupees from each package goes out yeah. for the bengal relief work but yes i think this end of 
offer is still on. So please book on to the Chai Ka Tea from uh, Swiggy or Zomato or the Insta Mojo app and you please donate 20 rupees out of this most reasonable packaging brand that I've come across. So yes, that's kudos to both you guys for thinking about as you say, besides being a startup, I mean, it's very easy to just write a check and give it, but to do something out of the hard work and put that across as a charity money is something which is very hard fulfilling. And um, coming Can to I this, add something to that, um, Devanshi. So we, uh, for everyone who has donated and is watching this, we're going to give out, we're going to tell you exactly that we've tied up with this NGO called Ek Packet Umid and we will tell you how many houses Chaika has built by the end of this fundraiser. Awesome. So you can feel proud. That's awesome. We and want I'm to let you know where your money has gone. Oh, I'm going to be awesomely proud, you know, that's for sure, because it's amazing to see young entrepreneurs like you doing social initiatives as well, which brings me to this question that, um, yes, T has gone through a lot of metamorphosis over time. Even in my last session, which I was sitting with an Amika, who happens to be the owner of the tea garden in Dharamshala, being in the business from 30 years also, she had to go through a manifestation of tea. As you guys as startups, what do you want to, uh, you know, initiate for the youth? What do you think in order to get the youth hooked on to tea so that they don't stop drinking tea? What is the innovation that we need to um, target to? And I think on that note, Radhita, Devanshi's um, internet is fused because I don't know if it's moving. But yes, you can go on. Maybe she'll join us back to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll... I'll just go on. Um, basically, uh, what we thought would really get the youth more into tea was convenience. Because I think convenience is now a buzzword for every single Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Next person. Um, we, want, we want what we want and we want it right now. Like nobody's willing to wait. So that's where Chaika comes in. You don't have to wait for your cup of tea. Your cup of tea is ready in like a matter of a minute. Um, you don't have to stand by a stove. You can be using an electric kettle and your cup of tea can be made. So I think that in itself appeals a lot to the youth. And we've seen that a lot of Chaika clients are the youth. It is not... Um, it is not necessarily, you know, older people who are buying chaika. It's also a lot of the younger people. A lot of people are carrying it, uh, you know, when they're going abroad for college. A lot of people are carrying it when they travel. A lot of people are even using it in their houses because they're too lazy to, you know, make the tea or ask someone to make it for them. Um, another thing that's really appealed to the youth when it comes to um, chaika is our packaging. Um, We've, we've uh, designed it to give like a nostalgic, quirky sort of feel. It's old school, yet it's young and quirky. Um, I think that has appealed a lot to the youth. And I think the biggest, but the biggest thing is definitely the convenience factor. And in fact, to appeal to the younger generation, we are planning to launch once, you know, once things get a little better post lockdown, a diet chaika, which will be a chaika without any added sugar. So since the younger generation is always like a little conscious about their weight and their health, so we want to do um, an instant tea without sugar. So that should also be out maybe in another month, month and a half, depending on what the COVID situation is like. That's awesome. So I have a few uh, viewer questions which I'm going to be asking you guys. One of my viewers wants to know, how did you think of the respective brews? So Devanshi, if you could want to answer that, do we still have you with us? No. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I lost the, my. Um, Devanshi, would you want to log out and log in again? Maybe uh, you will be able to um, relate to us better. Would you want? Yeah, to... Hello. Yes, I can. I can hear you. Yeah. So coming back to how we decided the flavors, we tried to go really, really old school. So for example, our Bombay cutting flavor is a traditional masala flavor. So it came about from the cutting chai that you get in Bombay. Right. Then the platform chai is actually a lemon liquor tea that was traditionally sold by the Thelawalas or those people in a railway station. So that's how the name comes about platform chai. Uh, when you look at the dhaba chai, it's very similar to your highway dhaba masala ginger tea. 
so we called it dhaba chai and pretty much that and the kolkata karak is your share market chai brought to you in a sachet so another viewer wants to know that uh, the blends that you're using to make your tea are they home gardens of from where you brew it so we're using a mix of home as well as outside gardens because of the dehydration process it really depends on which garden we would want to go to but we are not fixed on home versus outside but i would say it's a mix of both awesome so aradha if you would want to answer to this question where uh, a viewer wants to know are you planning to bring in more blends besides the diet yeah for sure so we want to launch uh, the diet tea and then we want to launch uh, very soon another flavor which would be the chai tea latte it would be um, somewhat like a very cinnamony masala tea and um, that could also be launched alongside uh, the the diet tea and apart from that we are also going to be launching a multi pack soon so that would allow you to maybe buy just one box and try out That's all our flavors at one go because you know those yeah. four packs and you have all the flavor in one so that yeah. that's that's really really great idea so viewers today we have this amazing amazing duo with us from chaika and who can say that women entrepreneurs don't have the skill or the ambition or the intellect to take it forward but isn't it so ironical that the harvard law actually says that when women investors go uh, you know uh, for uh, you know investment in their firm the questions which are shooted to them compared to the ones uh, Uh, you know initiated to men are totally different and it is pretty sad and it's this is also prevalent in development countries um you know that uh, such a gender biasness ex exists which even today speakers agreed to that they had to face a lot of such issues while they were trying to make the brands but it's commendable that in just 6 months of time how much of hard work and strong intent that they've put in has placed them today as one of the most successful tea startup brands in in kolkata and i'm proud to say that they're originating from my city but then the reach is going all over the country and now they're planning to even connect internationally in the b2b market and um, and very soon i would actually want to see the level where india stands according to you know uh, the world economic forum at the 142nd level compared to the 149 countries where uh, in the category where opportunities and economical advantages are given to women uh, the ranking of india is very poor and they are the entrepreneurs who come on board today to talk about their journey such aspirants who are going to be motivating more women entrepreneurs to come forward and actually break that cycle and we can see india soon bucking up i think what we need is just a strong intent and the go get a feeling they need to just hang in there and yes don't forget that you can try and you can fail but you need to try again and fail again and it's okay if you try and fail at the same same thing that you're doing try something new but what is important is that you cannot stop trying and as i always say in all my speeches that women you are allowed to pause but you're not allowed to stop so thank you so much aradha and devanshi for today's communication i think lot many are inspired a lot many women are understanding how you guys in spite of coming from such strong family backgrounds had to face definitely you know the stigma of gender bias at the same time the stigma of being a woman to actually uh, you know put your uh, uh, your venture forward and say you know what we are here to stay so yes uh, thank you thank you so very much for motivating my audience today and sharing your journey with me i'm very proud of you guys and i wish you all the very luck with your endeavor with your bengal relief and same time with chaika thank you, thank you so, so much, much. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you and viewers please don't stop at this please go ahead click on swiggy and zomato and hit on to that chai cup pack because i'm sure these guys are not going to let you down have a great day stay home and stay safe bye bye